one. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's welcome, welcome our Facebook family as they are coming on today. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Put our hands together for them. We're so thankful that they are coming on. We love you and we thank God for you. We've missed you. But I tell you what, God I know has his message today to touch you, to deliver. Some are going to be healed and delivered today by the message of the Lord. Praise God. And so before I begin, we're going to be talking about the Lord said, said, I will give you a new heart. I want you to think about that. And I will put a new spirit in you. Praise God for a new spirit. Hallelujah. But before I begin, we want to magnify the Lord. The Lord said, make known his deeds among the people. So we are going to show you, praise God, an awesome miracle that Jesus has done. Jesus does miracles today. How many believe that? Amen. How many know Jesus does miracles yes. today? Yes, he does. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change, praise God. So you're going to watch a awesome testimony. It's a testimony of healing. Here we go. forever. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your might, your dominion, your power, your healing, your deliverance, your restoration. Thank you, Jesus. You never change. You remain the same. So, Lord, we give you all the praise today. Thank you, Lord, that your people are set free, made whole. Thank you, Jesus. We honor you this day, Lord. We honor your word. Thank you, Lord. Let them see you and not me, Jesus. Let them hear you through me, Jesus. We give you praise. Amen. 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 In Ezekiel 36, 26. And I will give you a new heart, and I will put a new spirit in you. I want you to think about that. I recently have went to a rehab place to minister. And a new heart is what Jesus said, I will give you. I will give you, put a new spirit in you. You see, we cannot change our hearts. We cannot change our lives. 
We can't turn over, people will say, I'm going to turn over a new leaf. We can't do that. A new heart and a new spirit comes from Jesus Christ. And the reason why the Lord puts this new spirit in us is so we, he enables us to now live a godly Christian life. That's why he gives us a new spirit. Amen. And so we're going to see. I'm going to go. Thank you, Lord. Now, when the Lord places his new spirit in us, this is a soul that is saying, Lord God, I need you, Jesus. Jesus, I need you to come into my life. Jesus, I need you to become my savior. My Savior. Why does Jesus come in to save us from our sins? To deliver us from a sinful life. So Acts 13 says, through Jesus, the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. And through him, everyone who believes, every say believes. believes. Say it again, believes. believes. Believes is set free from every sin. I've had people say to me, I can't seem to get over or forgive myself for what I've done in my life. Has anybody ever had that happen to you? I can't get over it. When a heart is like that, that heart is not believing. You know, I believe that Judas could have received forgiveness for his sins. The Bible says he sought with carefully, with tears, for his sins. But he, he found no repentance. You know why? Judas never believed what Jesus said. And that's why he could not receive forgiveness. If you do not believe, you cannot receive forgiveness. But the moment you believe, the moment you look at Jesus and you say, Jesus, I'm coming to you right now for my forgiveness of my sins now today. Psalm 107 says his mercy endures forever. So how long does God's mercy last? Forever. Forever. We must have God's mercy. We must walk in forgiveness of our sins. If we're not forgiven by faith, then we walk in condemnation, guilt, and shame every day. That is why Jesus said, I'm going to take your sins I'm going to become sin so you could become righteous when you believe. The moment you believe my spirit, I'll give you a new spirit. I'll give you a new heart. And I put my new spirit in you. I put my new heart in you. And I forgive you totally so you can walk guilt-free, shame-free. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And you can live this godly life life before me and amen. live in my kingdom amen and my kingdom live in you amen, amen. That's right. yes. Jesus said it's my good pleasure to give you the kingdom God delights in giving to you these things amen, amen. in Ezekiel 36 26 through 28 all right this is in the message God, this is God speaking. God said, for here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take you out of these countries, gather you from all over, bring you back to your own land, and I'll pour pure water over you and scrub you clean. That's what the blood of Jesus Christ does. That's what the water the water, the living water of Jesus, that's what he does. And I'll give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. Everybody say a new heart. 
Say a new spirit. New spirit. And then God says, I'll remove the stone heart from your body. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that he removes that stony, hard-hearted, stubborn heart. I, if you were, I, when I was, before I was born again, I had a stubborn heart. I'm so thankful that the Lord Jesus said, I'm going to give you a new heart. Beloved, he takes the stone heart and replaces it with a heart that's God-willed. Not self-willed. Praise Jesus. I'll put my spirit in you and make it possible for you to do what I tell you and live by my commands. You'll once again live in the land I gave your ancestors. You'll be my people and I'll be your God. Praise God. This is a God promise. This is a fulfilled promise to the born again believers. Amen. Amen. In 1 Corinthians 2.12 says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. God wants you to know all the things that has already been given to you. But you have to believe. You have to believe to the point of searching out. You must treat the word of God like a priceless treasure that it is. And it is as you search and as you seek, hallelujah, you're seeking after him because he said, I and my word are one. So he wants you to live knowing these things so that they will become experiential in your life. So God has not given you the spirit of the world. And the Lord gave me this message for the saints of God, for the saints of God who also have been flirting with the world. God says, I've not given you the spirit of the world. I want you to recognize the spirit of the living God living on the inside of you. His spirit is powerful. You are powerful because God is living in you. You are more than a conqueror. You can conquer anything the enemy comes at you because God is in you. Yes. Amen, that's Thank right. You. you can overcome anything that comes your way because God is in you. Yes, he is. Yes. And so you have to believe and walk in the light of it. But if you don't believe, again, the enemies of this land, this is not only going to eat your lunch, but they're going to come and rob from you your inheritance yes. that has already been given to you. And so today I come with a message of his love to stir you up and to stand you up. Hallelujah. So God says these things have freely been given to you. We're going to look at a few of them today. Amen. In Colossians 1.13 says, He has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of His beloved Son. So you need to take a check of your location. You are not just in the world. You're not of it. You're in the kingdom. You're in the dwelling place of Almighty God. The Spirit of God lives inside of you. You are possessed by the Spirit of God. Amen. Yes. 
Jesus Christ is living in you. When you asked Jesus to come, when you invited him in, Jesus came inside of you. Yes, he did. And he's living in you. And it's by him everything gets conquered. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. It's by him and through him everything gets annihilated that's not of him. Praise God. Yeah. Everything. When I say everything, I'm talking about infirmities in your body. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm talking about anything the enemy has put on you must flee from you. Why? Because of the greater one who lives in you. Christ, the anointed one that destroys every yoke of bondage. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So he's already rescued you from the dominion of darkness. So why are you even contemplating or living in the darkness that has overtones of accusations against you? Why are you living there when you don't have to? Why are you living in a place of darkness that seems to come at you every day and bring you down and bring you depressed when the greater one lives inside of you, beloved? Let him arise. Amen. Let Amen. Christ arise in you right now. Amen. Amen. Say this. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. arise in me. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, be alive in me. Alive in me. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. What has freely been given to us? In Romans 8, 11, think about this. The spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. Yes. The spirit of him. Who raised Jesus from the dead? Who raised Jesus from the lower parts of the earth? We're talking about hell itself. So that should show you now that no dominion of darkness, no overtones of hell itself, nothing in hell can affect you anymore because the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead, dwells inside of you. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. We rejoice in the truth. Amen. You should be jumping up and down, shouting hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Facebook Live, you can just say, shout hallelujah right now. Yes, you can. Praise God. These are the things that has freely been given to us already. In 2 Corinthians 1, 22, and it's in the Passion Translation. I love the Passion Translation. He knows we are His since He has also stamped His seal of love over our hearts. And has given us the Holy Spirit like an engagement ring is given to a bride. A down payment of the blessings to come. In other words, when you surrendered your life to Jesus, when you called upon the name that is above every name, when you called on Jesus, our bridegroom, he came to you and he married you and he put his ring on your finger and he says, you're mine now. Hallelujah. 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 And all my blessings are yes and amen to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is exciting. Amen. Are you amen. excited? I am. Yes, absolutely. Second Peter 1 3 says, Seeing that his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness. Say life, life. and godliness. godliness. God, by his power, has released upon every believer everything that pertains to life. And this life is in the Son, Jesus Christ. He that hath the Son hath life. And godliness, that means your nature. As Peter, in, in the book of Peter, it says, Now are ye partakers of his divine nature. Yes. 
It's time to believe what the Father has already done, spoken, and said. It is finished. It's time to rise up and walk in the truth. Amen. To live in the truth. To believe this truth. And throw off. Today, people, you are throwing off the old. You're throwing off old mindsets. Those mindsets that the enemy will throw at you, you're throwing it off in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. God has called you. God has called a people by his own glory and his own excellence. And God the Father says, I've done all this for you by my divine power. Now, will you just open your hearts and open your minds and believe it? Amen? Oh, amen, yes. What are other things that have been freely given to us as believers? Jesus did not want you, he did not want the believers to live in the earth without his authority. Because he knew how destructive the enemy, the demons of hell are. Jesus faced demons in the wilderness. Amen? Amen. Forty days. Amen? Amen. And when he was in the wilderness, what happened? He faced the enemy. And he overcame, amen, by the word of God. How are you going to overcome in this hour? By the word of God. How are you going to conquer your enemies? The same way that Jesus conquered the enemy in the wilderness. Every temptation, he used the word of God. Luke 10, 19 said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And over all, I would say all, all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Right. Nothing shall hurt nothing. you. So if you say, oh my goodness, I've been hurt. The devil's just on me. Rise up in the name of Jesus. It's time for you to believe and engage in the authority that Jesus has given to you. Amen, that's right. Engage in your authority. Speak, Speak your authority mm -hmm. in the name. Jesus said, use my name. Hallelujah. Use the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Revelation 1, 6. And have made us kings and priests. Oh, Jesus. Do you see yourself as a king? Will you better? If you don't, change your mind. Repent today. A king and a priest. Do you see yourself as a priest? A priest offers up prayers. Offers up thanksgiving. Offers up. Thanksgiving to Jesus begins to pray for others. That's what a priest does. Even the priest Melchizedek gave tithes to Abraham. Paying your tithes is all a part of the priestly duties. Now, either you believe this or not. But if you don't believe it, you will be struggling or you're already struggling. You're already having trouble in your soul, in your house, in your mind, in your body. Because everything is by covenant blessings that God said, this is what I'm doing. Amen. And so the Lord says, I made you already a king. Rise up and believe it. I already made you a priest. Rise up and walk in it. Do it. That's how God looks upon his children. Are you obeying? Are you obeying as a priest? Are you obeying as a king? And then God says, unto God and his Father, and to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. This is all about you. This is all about the blessings that our Father has already bestowed upon us all, every believer has been bestowed upon. God said, I'm going to make you a king. I'm going to make you priest unto me. And so what we do is we yield our members to God and we say, God, 
Show me, Jesus, how. Show me what a priest looks like. Show me what a king looks like. It's not just wearing the garments. It's standing in the stead of Christ. As he is, so are we, Jesus said. Do you not know that you're the temple of the living God? The spirit of God dwells in you. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. It's the Son of God's faith. It's not your faith. It's the Son of God's faith that we live by. And as we believe that, Jesus said, now, step in. Step in. I will teach you. We have the best teacher, the Holy Spirit. And he loves you so much that he says, I give this unto you to live in this way. You can stop making excuses and say, I can't. Stop looking at yourself and see Christ in you. You know, the other day, the enemy was messing with us. And Jesus said this. He said, tell him that you died with Christ. You were buried with Christ. And you were made alive with Christ. When I said that, immediately the enemy left. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Lord gave me a fresh revelation. Hallelujah. How did the saints of God overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony? Amen. Amen. They loved not their lives unto the death. Amen. Now, now in Ezekiel 44, 23, I hope you can see this. And they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and profane and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. And here's where the Lord so spoke to me in instruction. He said, I want you and I'm going to guide you. He guided me in this next teaching. And it's still a part of the saints of the living God. You know, Paul wrote to the churches, especially in Corinth. He was telling the believers to put away their fleshly works. He was admonishing them. He was correcting them. He was rebuking them. And he was warning them. And this is where the Lord said to me, he said, you are coming with my warning. They shall teach my people the difference between the holy and profane. And cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. So we're going to see right now, this is that which is holy and clean. It's out of Ephesians 6, 17 and 18. Embrace the power of salvation's full deliverance. It's time for you to embrace the full deliverance of Jesus Christ's salvation. Like a helmet to protect your thoughts from lies. You must put this helmet on. You must, it's the helmet of salvation. And it protects you from the lies of the enemy. Jesus warned us about the devil, that he goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. The enemy's out to devour you. And if you are a believer, you have found that out, right? And so the Lord says, I want to show you how to stop the lies. That if you'll embrace the power of my salvation now not not when you go to heaven now in this life your everyday life your everyday walk embrace the power of salvation like a helmet to protect your thoughts from lies take the mighty razor sharp spirit sword of the spoken word of god As a believer, if you are not taking God's word in your heart and speaking it out of your mouth, you need to repent today. 
You need to ask the Lord to forgive you for your unbelief. Because believing, Paul said, I believed, therefore I spoke. So Paul, the great apostle, is one of our examples that we will follow after the apostle's doctrine. So Paul said, I believe, therefore I spoke. So when you read his word, his word comes alive in you and you speak it out. And you take glory to God, the razor sharp spirit sword of the spoken word of God. That's awesome. Yes, and then you pray passionately in the spirit. Passionately means fervently. You, you pray to the Father. You shut yourself away from phones, from TV. If the phone rings, you just cut it off because it's yours in God's time. Yeah. The Lord has corrected me so many times and have said, stay away from the phones because we have people who call us, stay away from the phones. We are in obedience to the Father. We're in obedience to him. And when it's his time, it's his time. It's separation time. Amen. Amen. Pray passionately in the spirit as you constantly intercede with every form of prayer at all times. Pray the blessings of God upon all his believers. Pray the blessings. Bless them with peace. Bless them with grace. Bless them with mercy. Amen. Amen. Bless them with health. Bless that they're healed. Bless that they're made whole. Say, I just bless you in Jesus' name. This is holy unto God. This is pure. This is clean before the Father. Now I want to talk to you about the spirit of the world. You remember in the beginning, God said, we have not received the spirit of this world. So the spirit of the world is not in a true believer of Christ. In the spirit of the world, there is this lust for money, for fine cars. Now, I'm not saying a fine car, that you can't have it. But I'm saying the spirit of the world, there's a lust to go after things all the time. And this is what is profane in the eyes of Almighty God. There are movies out there that, that are horror movies that just, and I don't ever watch horror movies, but horror movies open the doors, the believers, listen to me, when you watch horror movies, you are opening the door to demonic influence, demonic activity of fear. He puts fear on you. But as a believer, you're opening your spirit up to the spirit of the world. Satan is the God of this world, the God of this age, the prince of power of the air. And so he comes and he creates these horror movies that are created by demons that want to bring you into this demonic depression and oppression. The sexo, sexic movies, there's so many movies that has to do with sexual immorality. That's an open door. Demons want you to go through that door. Go through the spirit of this world and look at these sexual movies that are going to bring lust and illicit sex and cravings in this world that is immoral. Because the enemy knows he comes to tempt you of sin. God never tempts with sin, ever. He will test you, but he will never, ever tempt you with sin, ever. The spirit of this world to party, to drink, to drink alcohol, to, to dance with, with before songs that, that just are full of vulgarity. That's the spirit of this world. And as you listen, when you give your ear gate to the spirit of this world, then the demons of hell 
you've given them access to you to attack you to to come in and and oppress you that's the spirit of the world that's why god said i'll put a new spirit in you i'll put my kingdom in you i'll give you a new heart so it will no longer be self-will it will be god's will being done psychic reading horoscopes believers if you are opening your doors to psychic reading or horoscopes you have opened the door to the demonic realm of witchcraft gambling the spirit of the world is this is part of the spirit of the world gambling taking and, and going and taking your money and going and, and placing it on bets Gambling is the spirit of the world. Gambling is not in the kingdom of God. Get rich quick schemes. How to, you know, how to get money quick. When God the Father in the kingdom, he says, you come unto me, acknowledge me in all your ways, I'll direct your steps. He said, I wish above all things, he said to the Children in the kingdom, I wish above all things that you will prosper. God said, I'll give you witty inventions. The Lord gives us ways. He said, if you sow, you will reap. If you sow your tithes, you're going to reap. Amen. False religions. You will just fall for false religions. There's a religion out there. It's called Falun Gong. It it's all has all all um, it's just false. Let me say that, and it's growing rapidly, and it has to do with parts of yoga, and 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 these kind of physical movements, but it's a false religion and it's a false god. That's the spirit of this world. The spirit of the world is always going to carry you away to the false gods. The occult, magic, and witchcraft. You know, you might find that entertaining, but I'm telling you, you're opening the door. Witchcraft, you're opening the door. You're giving access to the demonic. And that is the spirit of the world. And there's much more. I've just tapped into here, just exposing a little bit. But when you begin to Open your eyes or your ears to the spirit of this world in this measure. It's going to affect you spiritually. This is why the great apostle Paul came to the church. And this is what he said in James 4.4. 4, he says, you have become spiritual adulterers who are having an affair. He calls it an affair. A unholy relationship with the world with the spirit of the world don't you know that flirting with the world's values places you at odds with God whoever chooses to be the world's friend makes himself God's enemy oh Jesus the spirit of the world hates God the spirit of the world mocks God. The spirit of the world despises believers. The spirit of the world loves darkness. The spirit of the world feeds on evil. The spirit of the world loves money. The spirit of the world seduces whoever to sin and to keep on sinning. Because the demons of hell know that the wages of sin is death. So they want to keep tempting you to sin. This is why our Lord, praise God, Jesus came and said, I came to give you life and give you life more abundantly. So the Lord says, I want to put in you and on you the abundant life. You don't have to live in the spirit of the world. You can walk in my kingdom be free from the effects from the spirit of the world. The world tells lies. The spirit of the world loves the God of this world, which is Satan. So you have to discern that which is holy, 
what is acceptable to God, but what is unholy, unclean, and not acceptable to God. As believers, we must run away, run from the spirit of this world and say, no, I'm not going to allow it to get in me now. I'm not saying not go into all the world because we do go into all the world. Praise God. God, we are so blessed to be able to go into the nations that we have preached the gospel. To go to the cities and towns and streets and, and, and in the tents and how God has sent us to preach his gospel. But I'm here to tell you that we discern and recognize the spirit of this world. And there's a, like, inside of the believer, there's a disgust, like, no. There's an abhorring, no. I do not want this. That is what goes on inside of you. Because God the Father is the same way. God abhors evil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the Lord is coming today. And saying, I want you to not flirt with the world, the spirit of the world. Don't allow the spirit of the world to attach itself to you to where you are conforming to its mindsets and its ways. That's how the enemy entices you to do like the world. It's against our God. Amen. Amen. And here's the warning. In Galatians. Apostle Paul said in Galatians 5.19, the behavior of the self-life is obvious. Sexual immorality, lustful thoughts, pornography, chasing after things instead of God, manipulating others, hatred of those who get in your way, senseless arguments, resentment when others are favored, Temper tantrums, angry quarrels, only thinking of yourself, being in love with your own opinions, being envious of the blessings of others, that's jealousy, murder, which is hating another. God says if you have hate in your heart, you're a murderer. Uncontrolled addictions, wild parties, and all other similar behavior. Haven't I already warned you that those who use their freedom, now these are believers. Paul's warning them, he says, those who use their freedom for these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So the Lord comes with a, a loving but very direct warning. God is coming to clean up his church to say, clean your life up today. Come out from doing any of these things. Confess the sin. Forsake it, and you will obtain mercy. God's mercy endures forever. That is how your Cleanse. That's how you are washed by exercising your faith to believe that you can confess your sin. As 1 John 1 9 says, confess your sin. He that confesses his sin will, God says, I'll be faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Here's another warning in 1 Corinthians 6 9 through 12. Paul's writing to the churches. He says, surely you must know that people who practice evil cannot possess God's kingdom realm. Stop being deceived. People who continue to engage in sexual immorality, that is, that covers so much, doesn't it? Sexual immorality. Living with someone and you're not married under God. You're not married before God. You know, I don't know if some of you people, uh, some of you know this in the state of Alabama, but they've come out with an, a law that you don't even have to get a marriage license anymore. Is that crazy? No marriage license 
anymore. In other words, if you just want to shack up, you can shack up. I want to tell you this. That may be Alabama's law, but that's not God's law. God's law brings a man and a woman together in matrimony, in marriage before him. That is the right way. That's the holy way. Amen. Amen. That's right. So, God says, those who continue to engage in sexual immorality, idolatry, adultery, sexual perversion, homosexuality, fraud, greed, drunkenness, verbal abuse. God's talking to those who are verbally abusive, Either to your children, your wife, your husband, it doesn't matter if you're verbally abusive. You must repent. If you call yourself a believer, you must repent, confess your sin, and let God the Father cleanse you, wash you, deliver you, and make you whole. It says, or extortion. It says, these will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's true that some of you once lived in those lifestyles, but now, he says, when now you have been purified from sin and made holy. So you are purified from this sin. You are made holy. So walk in holiness. Walk in purity. You say, well, that's hard to do. If you think it's hard to do, then it's hard to do. And you'll live in that mindset, which is unbelief. I want to talk to you about unbelief, how dangerous it is. Because all unbelievers who don't believe God's word, who don't walk in God's word, who will not obey God's word, who will not do God's word, they're going to find themselves in the lake of fire. That's his word. And Revelation 20.10 says the devil... Who deceived them? Who deceives people? The devil. Was cast into the lake of fire. Some of you out there that are listening, you say, well, I don't believe in hell. Hell is real. Oh, yeah. The word of God states it. Don't let people tell you that are that don't even walk with Jesus tell you these things. Don't believe those things that they say that. They'll just automatically say it. If you take that bait of Satan, then guess what? You will not know the fear of God. And the Lord said, without fear and holiness, no man is going to see God. So this is God's loving instructions and warnings coming to us. It says, the devil deceived them with cast the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Tormented day and night. Revelation 20, 14 says, Then death and hell, Hades, was cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. You want your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yes, yes. Absolutely. You need your name written. You say, how do I get my name written? Bow your knees to the Lord Jesus Christ. Begin to let your heart go, come from your heart, from your heart to your mouth to Jesus. And say, Lord, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I receive and believe what you did on the cross at Calvary. I believe you died for me. I believe you shed your blood for me. I believe you took all of my sins so I could be forgiven. And I receive you right now. I believe that you died with my sin. You were buried with my sin and on the third day you rose again. When you believe the Spirit of God, you get a new spirit, which is Jesus Christ. You get a new heart, which is the heart of the Father. Amen. Amen. That is how your name begins to be written on the Lamb's Book of Life. 
Revelation 21, 8. But the cowardly. Who is the cowardly? Those who could not stand up for Jesus Christ. Those who went and ran and hid and, and, and was afraid of death and afraid of everything. The cowardly. The unbelieving. Now, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He says, tell my people that unbelieving means you're not walking with my son, Jesus Christ. That is unbelieving. If you're not believing in my son, if you've not accepted my son, then you're walking in unbelief and unbelievers will have their place in the lake of fire. And it makes me want to cry because God the Father is crying. God wants believers. He wants those to believe. He doesn't want you to perish away with the spirit of the world that will come upon you and make you un be unbelieving. You, uh, you must discern who is speaking to you. Do you have friends who don't believe? Well, they can influence you. The demons of hell will use them to make you not believe. You know, there's been people who have gone to war and God loves them, but they have great, they have allowed their minds to not believe in God because of all what their eyes, the trauma and everything that they went through. And so they have been a strong influence against on many people. And you have to discern when people live like there is no God, they're an unbeliever. And you have to ask yourself, do I want to open my heart and mind to this unbeliever, which will have effect on you? Yes, it will. Bad company corrects, corrupts good morals. So the Father doesn't want anyone to perish. This is why he comes with his word. God's word is eternal. God's word is everlasting. God's word is a sure foundation. So unbelievers, it's those who don't, they walk as though there is no God. They live as though there is no God. They talk as though there is no God. They put their eyes on things as though there is no God. They are the unbelievers. It don't matter if you were water baptized when you were a child. If you're walking as an unbeliever, you're an unbeliever. And your fate is the lake of fire. If you don't repent, if you don't turn, if you don't ask Jesus to forgive you. There's so many people who walk around acting as though they've not done one thing wrong in the eyes of God. And yet they live a life as though there is no God. It's really time to look at your heart, examine your heart, and see if you really do believe. See if you're living like a believer. Talking like a believer. Thinking like a believer. Because God the Father says in Revelation 21.8, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, abominable. That is the homosexual lifestyle. That is transgenderism. That is abominable. Murders. Sexually immoral. Sorcerers. Sorcerers. Those who are practicing magic. Wicca, witches, white Wicca, it's still sorcery, it's still witchcraft. Idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. The Lord is bringing lovingly his warning. He brings his warning for one reason. 
for you, for your heart to turn. What's an idolater? A worshiper of a false god. Used of anyone, even Christian, participating any way in the worship of the heathen. Worship of the heathen. We have these huge, huge concerts. And, and, and believers who call themselves believers are in the midst of these huge concerts. Lady Gaga. Uh, there's one out there. Her name is English. Her last name. Her whole overtones. Lord God, may God get a hold of her heart. She is solely of the devil. Demons are inside of her. And if you go and you go and enter to be entertained by these who are giving themselves to demons of hell, it's you're worshiping. God calls it an idolater. One who attends their sacrificial feasts. Also an idolater is a covetous man or woman as a worshiper of mammon, which is money. You've got to have money. Where am I going to get money? How am I getting money? Money, 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 money. You can't serve God and mammon at the same time. A whoremonger. A man or a woman who prostitutes their body to another lust for hire. A male prostitute, a woman prostitute. A man or woman who indulges in unlawful sexual intercourse. A fornicator. That's the whoremonger. Abominable is those who turns oneself away from on account of the stench to abhor. God says homosexuality is an abomination to me. God loves, now hear me, he loves the sinner. He hates the sin, but he wants you to repent because God's coming with a warning. He wants you to come out of the darkness, come out of the sin. No more flirting with the spirit of the world and live in the kingdom of our God. What is a sorcerer? One who prepares or uses magical remedies. It's amazing that in this definition that I looked up in the Blue Letter Bible, it says pharmacae like pharmacaea, like pharmacist, a druggist, drugs. What are the fearful? Who are the fearful that God says will find themselves in the lake of fire? Those who dread, those who are timid by implication, they're faithless. Fearful Christians who through cowardice give way under persecution. Persecutions, if it has not already come to you, is coming. This is why you have to get under the shadow of the Almighty. It's time for you to get under the rock. His name is Jesus Christ. Get on the rock. Let the wings of the Father cover you under His wings. Psalms 91. This is the place that you can abide in, believers. This is what God has freely given to us. But if you throw off what God has already given to you, then you are being caught up in the spirit of the world. This is why Paul came warning. Today I'm coming to warn you. The unbelieving is the unfaithful. You'll find unbe unbelieving, unbelievers, they're not faithful to God. They're not faithful to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. They're not faithful to God. It's unfaithful, faithless, not to be trusted without trust in God. That means the unbelieving, they'll trust in everything else but God. They'll put their trust maybe in man. They'll put their trust in their best friend. They'll put their trust in their finances. They'll put their trust in anything else other than God. God is bringing his words and calling us, his believers, to repentance. 
He's calling you to repentance, to repent from unbelief. And murderers are a murderer or one who hates in their heart. If you have hatred for anyone, you are as a murderer. That's what the Word of God says. God says be separate. Be ye separate. A Christian can't possibly claim to be born again and separated from the world when they cuss like everyone else, get drunk like everyone else, get high on drugs like everyone else, engage in fornication just like everyone else, live the LGBTQ lifestyle, or do any other things that displeases the Lord and think that they're believers. You have to repent and come out from the world. Amen. Amen. In the last days, good will be called evil and evil called good. We're living in those That's days. Right. But God said, woe unto them. That means it's not coming good for those who call evil good and good evil. We can't just pretend that, well, you know what they're doing. You know, everybody does it, so I can't say anything. Yes, you can. You too. God says in his word to warn the unruly. Isaiah 5, 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil that put darkness for light and light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Right. This is what God said. Woe to them. Burning up cities and catching them on fire. That is evil. That is not good. Going into the schools and having um, drag queen hour in our schools. That is evil. That is not good. Defunding the police in our nation. Dishonoring them. That is not good. That is evil. Bringing such filth in our schools to our little ones. To let them even question their identity, their gender identity. To come and entice and manipulate. That is evil. That is not good. Woe be unto them. We cannot call good evil or evil good. We must call evil, evil, and we must say what is good is good. That is what our Father has called us true believers to stand in and to proclaim truth. Speak the truth in love. I come to you today in love, not condemnation. I come to you in the name of the Lord. 2 Timothy 3, 1 and 5 says, Don't be naive. There are difficult times ahead. As the end approaches, people are going to be self-absorbed, money-hungry, self-promoting, stuck-up, profane, contemptuous of parents, crude, coarse, dog-eat-dog, unbending slanders, impulsively wild, savage, Cynical, treacherous, ruthless, bloated windbags, addicted to lust and allergic to God. They'll make a show of religion, but behind the scenes, they're animals. Paul says, stay clear of these people. This is the holy way. This is God's way. God says, stay clear of these people. There are some you can't even reach because God has given them over to a reprobate mind. Right. So don't even try to change their mind. It's in the hands of our God. I'm going to show you something that is so profane to our God. You need to recognize it. Now, it's clear that you're going to say, well, yes, that's, that's the devil. 
But these are influencers coming in our nation to influence your children, to influence your teenagers. That is why we, the body of Christ, the believers, must lift up our voices and speak the truth and love. We must warn the unruly. We must say what God has freely given to us, but also bring a warning to the believers who again are messing with the world. It's a beautiful day here at the state capitol. This is profane. These are Satanists. I'm very excited about it. Are they evil or just misunderstood? Hail Satan. Hail Satan. Hail Satan. You hear them saying, Hail Satan? The documentary, Hail Satan, explores those questions while following the rise of the Satanic Temple. Director Penny Lane says the creation of the film took her on a spiritual and educational journey. No shame. In three years, they had at least 50,000 members. Um, and within six years, which is the amount of time the film covers, they have over 100,000 members. 100,000 members. Chapters have popped up uh, all around the United States and increasingly abroad as well. A goal of her film was to debunk myths and misconceptions about this religion. Modern Satanism is an atheistic religion. Um, there's no sort of belief in supernatural. Atheistic religion, before. yes. What they do have they is do not a believe in God. understanding of the power of mythology, art, ritual, uh, in everyday life, and in forming community and in allowing you to do good works in the world. So that was a big surprise, um, because who knew? That's what Satanists believed. I didn't know. And a tenet of the religion is activism. The film shows how the Satanic Temple organizes to fight for equal representation of religions in government. Members took their cause to Arkansas, where a state senator pushed to erect a monument of the Ten Commandments on the grounds of the state capitol. State officials have put up a Ten Commandments monument on government property. Satanists are demanding equal rights. I am a tax-paying member of Arkansas. I don't want that there. The temple raised more than $20,000 to commission a statue of the deity Baphomet, hoping to place it next to the Ten Commandments. Here are two religious faiths that disagree with one another about some fundamental things. Um, what do we think the role of the government should be? Lane interviewed many members across the country who say they found a place in the Satanic Temple after feeling out of place in other religions. Satanism is looking out for the other because we are the other. Satan is looking out for the other because we are the other. Did you hear what he said? We are oh, yeah. the other. Oh, yeah. Now, there's, they are adamant about what they're doing. They are zealous for what they're doing. They are bold for what they're doing. How much more should we as believers be as bold as adamant, lifting up the name of Jesus Christ, fulfilling the great commission and going into all the world and preaching his gospel? Now what he said is he said, we are the other. What did God say about the other? You shall have no other gods before me. You know, right there, Satan, he, he knows the word. So that is why he's in tempting and, and enticing the young generation to come on his side. It is a war against evil, darkness, and light, and righteousness, and holiness. It is a war, but praise God, we win! Hallelujah! Amen. We've already won because our Lord has won. But here is the thing. We must discern. That's easily to discern that that's profane against God, right? That believers would have nothing to do with that. That's just blatant. But I'm here to tell you that these Satanists are right there at the clubs, the nightclubs. These Satanists are right there in the schools. They're right there. They're everywhere. And so we must discern that which is evil. Discern it. God says have nothing to do with it. Now we are sent to those who are in the world. We share the gospel that they will, praise God, they will hear the gospel. They will repent. They will be washed in the blood of the Lamb. But the Lord is speaking to the believers today. Those who call themselves believers. 
In 2 Corinthians 6, 17, Therefore come out from them. Be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing. I will receive you. I will be a father to you. And you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. This is holy before God. This is clean. Every time the Lord's word, his word is holy. And so I love how you see the fish is jumping out of all the fish that are swimming inside that little fish tank. See, this fish is being brave. He said, okay, I'm coming out. I'm coming out from among them. I'm not going to swim no longer with them in their darkness. I'm not going to swim anymore, Lord. I'm not going to do those things that I know is displeasing to you. You know they're displeasing to God. God says, come out now and be separate. Amen. 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 You say, well, what must I do? Peter replied in Acts 2, 38. Repent. That means turn away 100%. Not your hand a little bit in the spirit of the world. No. Repent. Change your mind. Metaneo. That's what repent means. Metaneo. Change your mind today. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. Do you know how one is forgiven of their sins? They repent. They have to repent. They have to renounce. They have to confess their sin. You have to say, you just don't slide in. You know, like, okay, okay, I'm just going to turn. No, you confess your sin. Whatever you've been doing, if it's sexual immorality, if it's pornography, mm -hmm. you renounce it to the Lord. Lord, I'm sorry. I have been looking on pornography. Lord, I'm sorry. I have had sexual thoughts. Now, just because you may, the enemy may be throwing sexual thoughts and you have not engaged in them doesn't make you sin. No, you ask the blood of the Lamb, cleanse my thoughts, Jesus. Wash my thoughts. And if it's continuing, you may de need deliverance. Demons may be there. You need deliverance. Jesus comes today. And he's saying, I want you to be delivered. I want you to be made whole and set free today. So as you confess, you're going to have a chance today to confess before the Lord, to get it right before the King today. This message is to you, for you, today. Today is a day of salvation and deliverance. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit does not dwell in an unclean temple. That is why you must be cleansed. You must be washed. You must confess. You must renounce. You must denounce and say, I repent, I'm turning away now. Come, Lord, and fill me. In a moment, we're going to pray. Now, this is what is holy right here. In Romans 12, 9 and 13. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Saints of God, we're to hate sin. If you don't have a hatred for sin, ask Jesus. Say, Jesus, give me such a hatred for sin. Yield to Christ in you because he hates sin. Hold fast to that which is good. Love one another with a brotherly affection. Notice it says affection. That's a hug. That's some kind of gesture. Those are words, I love you, brother. I love you, my sister, so much. What did Jesus say? They'll know my disciples by the love that they have for one another. Outdo one another in showing honor. God loves this. This is holy before God. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Hallelujah. 
Hope is the joyful anticipation of good things coming your way. Be patient in tribulation. Be patient. If you're going through a tribulation time, be patient in it. Don't go negative in your soul. Some of you are going negative. No, no, no. It's a tribulation. You're being tested. You're being tested of your faith. Use your faith. Engage in your faith. Speak the word of God. Hallelujah. Patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. That means pray all the time. Pray and trust the Lord and say, Lord, I thank you. I love you, Jesus. I'm trusting you through all of this. I trust you, Lord. Lord, I will. I choose not to be moved by what I see, what I feel, what I think. Lord, I'm only going to be moved by you, by your spirit, by your word. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. This is holy before God. Amen. Well, I pray. We're going to pray right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We're going to pray right now. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for the believers. We thank you for those who are called by your name. The ones, Lord, that has come and bowed their knees to you. And they have asked forgiveness, Lord. Today, Today, if you need to just get on your knees right where you are, can you just do that? If you can just bow your head before God and as we bow before Him, as you are bowed before Him, I want you to take this moment and just ask the Holy Spirit Say, Holy Spirit, have I given in to the spirit of this world in any way? Show me. Holy Spirit, I thank you for your light right now coming to your people. I thank you, Father, your love and your light is coming to your sons and daughters right now. And Lord, you come spirit thank you Holy Spirit we love you so much and how much we need your light so I thank you Holy Spirit for revealing truth to hearts right now that you're revealing truth of where the enemy has enticed your sons and daughters, who has tempted your sons and daughters in any way, who has brought them in this trap of the spirit of the world. Holy Spirit, I thank you right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for revealing making known to that heart where where they have stepped in where they have opened the door to sin I thank you Holy Spirit now as you see as your heart is open to see begin to agree with the Holy Spirit just agree. Say, Holy Spirit, I see that. And I confess that as sin. I have sinned against you. And just begin to renounce. You can renounce. You can begin to confess that sin, whatever it is. The Holy Spirit is not condemning you. The 
Holy Spirit comes to recover you. He comes to help you. He's our helper. The scripture calls him our parakletos, the one who comes alongside of us, who comes to comfort us and help us to recover ourselves out from the snare of Satan. And just confess that sin, whatever it is, as the Holy Spirit is showing you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, I pray and I thank you. I thank you that your sons and daughters are confessing to you. And that your blood of your son, Jesus Christ, comes right now to where they are. Your blood cleanses them right now of fears, anxiety. The blood of Jesus cleanses of all sin. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And the blood of Jesus, you who were once afar off, are made nigh by the blood of the Lamb. As the Holy Spirit is cleansing you right now, is also restoring you back, restoring you back into right standing with the Father. It's righteousness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Be healed today. Be made whole today. I decree freedom to your spirit man. Freedom now to arise from the shackles of Satan. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, I come against the spirit of oppression and depression. You who have repented for opening the doors to the darkness. The Father is coming now. The Holy Spirit, hallelujah, is recovering you and restoring you. Bringing you out from the clutches of the enemy. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, you shall go free in the mighty name of Jesus. I break off of you this day every demonic spirit, every demonic oppression, every demonic lies. In Jesus' name. And I break it off you now and I detach you right now from those demons of hell in Jesus' name. And I decree over your spirit, soul, and body. Hallelujah. Be healed in your spirit, man. Be healed in your soul, in your mind. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Be made whole today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, Lord. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name, God. Those of you who are coming out today, you're coming out from the old mindsets. You're coming out from the mindsets that have entangled you with yokes of bondage. Well, you're not good enough or you're unworthy. 
or you'll never be. I break those lies off of you in Jesus' name. And I decree freedom in the Holy Spirit this day. Freedom to arise now. Freedom to arise in the truth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Truth to arise in the true light of God's Word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. To walk in the fullness of Christ in you, the hope of glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I pray over you that the God of peace, that the God of peace and harmony will set you apart, making you completely holy today. And may your entire being, your spirit, your soul, and your body be kept completely blameless in the appearing of our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One. The one who calls you by His name is trustworthy and will thoroughly complete His work in you. Amen. He who had begun a good work in you shall perform it. He will perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you for being patient with me today. I know it has been long today, but I had to release what God has said today. I pray you will share it. I pray you will share this message. Will you put it on your Facebook page? Will you put it on a platform to get his word out? This is all about saving souls. It's about saving them and bringing God's people out from the darkness. Amen? Amen. Amen. We love you so much. I thank every one of you for joining us today. Praise God. I don't know if I can see who's on. Hallelujah. If you want me to. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, we just want to take this moment of thanking those of you who are on today. Thank you. We have Nigeria. God bless you. Amen. We have Kimberly Wilkes. Lundy, God bless you. I can't see the others, but I thank you for joining. Praise the Lord. And those of you who will come on later on, we thank God for you. I thank God for World Outreach believers. I thank God for them. I thank God for those who have continued to walk with us, support us, Believe in Jesus Christ in us. To stand with us. Amen. Amen. I thank God. And I want to say to those of you again, thank you for your, your, your giving, your love first and foremost. That is the most glorious thing. Is the love that should have brought in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And we can share His love with each other with our families, with the lost, with those who don't know the Lord. Amen. So praise God. God bless each and every one of you. We want to thank you again for tuning in and thank you for sharing it. God bless everyone. Good day. Have a blessed day. Amen and amen. Praise God. <laughs>